many of us over the next few weeks and months will be heading straight to our gardens to enjoy them. And today, we're going to also be spending a few moments in a garden with Jesus, and that was the Garden of Gethsemane. But on this occasion, I almost think of it as the Garden of Grief. It's right here in the Garden of Gethsemane that Jesus goes through his greatest battle yet of agony. Why was he in agony? For two reasons, the cross and the cup that he was about to face. See, on one hand, Jesus knew that he was about to go through the cross, to be executed and nailed to a cross, and what agony that was bringing in his soul. But even more than that, he was about to face the cup, and the Bible describes it as the cup of God's wrath. What does that mean? The cup of God's wrath was all the sin of the world and your sin and my sin that was in this cup and it was about to all be placed on Jesus. Jesus, the sinless man, was about to become the sin of the world. And not only that, the greatest agony for Jesus in this moment is that he knew that because he was about to become sin, that he would face separation from the Father. Never in Jesus' life on earth had he been separated from the Father, even for a second. And the thought of his separation from the Father brought him the greatest agony. And we see how Jesus responds in the middle of this agony. Here are the words that we see Jesus say in Matthew chapter 26, verse 39. He went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And then in verse 42, Jesus prays the same prayer for the second time. Sometimes you've got to say the right prayer again and again. Again, a second time, he went away and prayed, saying, Oh, my Father, if this cup cannot pass away from me unless I drink it, your will be done. Your will be done. Wow. Right here in the middle of agony like you and I will probably never face. Jesus' final words were, Not my will be done but your will be done, Father. Jesus, I'm going to do it your way. Whatever you're saying, Father, if I've got to take this cup, I'm going to take it. As your will be done. Maybe Jesus in those moments was casting his mind back to how he taught his disciples to pray. Do you remember the Lord's Prayer? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done. In this moment, that was the words that Jesus was truly saying. Your will be done. I want to ask you today, consider that actually for your life right now, that Holy Spirit wants to help you to pray that very same prayer over your life. In whatever situations you're facing, that Holy Spirit wants you to be able to say, God, your will be done in my life. You see, often, and I've been guilty of this, we go to God with our plans and our will, and we just want God to come and rubber stamp it and say, okay, let's do that, what you want to do, Leanne. Let's make your plan happen. But we got it all the wrong way around. Because actually God wants us to come and say, God, Father, whatever your will is, that's what I'll do. Whatever your will is, that's the path 
I want to walk down. It means giving up control. Ouch. It means letting God sit in the driving seat of your life. That requires some faith. And sometimes it means not knowing all the answers, but simply trusting. A few years ago now, we were selling our house. We put it on the market and we waited one month, two months, six months, 12 months. Our house was not selling. And long story short, it was a few, the straight in months. And around the 18 month mark, we still not sold it. God had to do a deep work in my heart where I got to the point where I had to say, God, just let your will be done. I want to move house, but maybe that's not your will right now. Maybe it's not your time. And God had to take me through a journey. And long story short, we sold our house after three and a half years. We got a buyer. And the very house we bought was the house for us. But it wasn't going to be ready until that very time. We had to trust God. We had to let his will be done. Because his will for you is the perfect will. So I want to invite you to pray the most scariest, but what I believe is the best prayer you can ever pray. And it simply is, God, let your will be done in my life. And you just wait and see what happens when you start praying that prayer from the bottom of your heart. So why don't we pray right now? Dear God, we want your will to be done and your kingdom to come in our lives today and every day. Help us to be pliable, agile to your will and the work of your spirit in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. See you tomorrow on day three. Bye for now.